We have been looking at this blank worksheet long enough. Let's build a simple spreadsheet for Suzanne's business, the Turning Pages Bookstore. Suzanne wants to create a spreadsheet budget to see where her income and expenses are going. We'll start by entering some labels and then set up the formulas to do our calculations. After that, we'll enter some numbers and plan Suzanne's financial future as a bookstore owner. Let's start at the top. Everyone should have cell A1 selected. The title of our spreadsheet will be Suzanne's Turning Pages Bookstore. Type it just like it appears on screen with the spelling mistake in the word bookstore. As we started typing, two more symbols appeared on the formula bar. The X is the cancel button. Clicking it rejects new data entered into a cell. Pressing the escape key performs the same action. The check mark is the enter or confirm button. Clicking it accepts new data. Pressing the enter key performs the same action. Go ahead and click the check mark. The button with the FX is the function wizard button. It simplifies entering formulas in Excel. On the far left of the formula bar is the name box. It allows us to enter a cell number and go immediately to that cell. Click in the name box, type C8, and press the enter key. If we know which cell to go to, typing the cell address in the name box is one of the fastest ways to get there. A cell's address consists of the column letter and row number in which the cell resides. The column letter is followed by the row number, for example, A1, B2, R278, or even Z10,000. This is especially useful in large spreadsheets with several hundred lines and columns. Press the Control and Home keys together to return to cell A1. The title we entered in cell A1 is called a label. Labels are usually words that tell us what the numbers in our spreadsheet refer to. Before we go much further, let's take a look at a few basic editing tools. In order to edit a cell's contents, that cell must be active. The mistake we want to correct is in cell A1. Click anywhere in the formula bar's edit box. The status bar at the bottom indicates we are in edit mode. The edit mode allows us to make changes to our typing without retyping the whole thing. Click and drag the mouse from the S to the A in the word Suzanne's. Press the delete key to make the highlighted text disappear. This method works well when we want to delete larger words or entire phrases. We can also use the delete key to erase a few letters at a time. Press the delete key until the remaining letters in the word are erased. Press the right arrow key to move the insertion point, that's the blinking bar on the formula bar, to just before the O in the third word. Type another O to correct the misspelling of bookstore. Press the enter key or click the check mark. Notice the words turning pages bookstore are too big for cell A1 and spill over into column B and C. This is called a long label and isn't a problem unless something in column B also wants to use the space. We'll see how to handle that later. Click cell B1 and look at the formula bar. That cell is empty, which is why the words from A1 were able to spill over into it. Return to cell A1. Remember all this typing is stored in cell A1, as the name box indicates. Move down to cell A3 and type income. and press the enter key twice. Type expenses in cell A5 and press the enter key once. We'll keep this spreadsheet simple and stick to the basic necessities. Our remaining categories are rent, advertising, telephone, office supplies, and insurance. Type the expense labels in the column directly below the expense title in column A, exactly as you see them on screen, mistakes and all pressing the enter key or the down arrow after each word. Feel free to pause or rewind the lesson to allow enough time to type these labels into your spreadsheet. At the bottom of the list of expense categories, type total expenses. We also need a balance line, so leave one blank row and enter the word balance as a label in cell A13. Click cell B2 and type January. 
Before pressing the enter key, place the pointer on the small bold bracket in the lower right corner of the cell. Your pointer will become a small cross, which is called the fill handle. Click and drag the fill handle across the next few cells. As we move across the columns, notice the name of the following month displays as a guide. Continue dragging to fill in the months through June. When we release the mouse, Excel fills in the next five months on its own. Excel automatically continues a series of numbers, dates, or time periods based on a pattern. It extends a series such as months, days, or other predictable lists. A little box attached to the fill handle is called the Auto Fill feature. Go ahead and click it. By clicking the box, you can choose from options other than the logical choice suggested by Excel. Copy cells would copy January the entire way across our selected area, which we don't want. We could use Fill Series or Fill Months, but Excel anticipated our request and already filled in the months in order. Press the Escape key to close the box. Press Control Home to move back to cell A1. We're going to spell check our labels. Select the Review Contextual tab from the top of the ribbon. In the area entitled Proofing, select the Spelling tool. The Spell Check dialog box opens, telling us advertising is misspelled. Excel put its best guess in the suggestion box with the most likely highlighted. Since Excel has offered the correct word, click Change, and our first misspelled word is corrected. The next misspelled word, insurance, is quickly found and Excel gives us suggestions to correct it too. We could click change, but instead let's use a different spell check command, autocorrect. Clicking the autocorrect button causes two things to happen. The misspelling is corrected for us, plus the word insurance is added to a list of other commonly misspelled words that are in autocorrect's memory. Anytime you spell insurance with S-I-R instead of S-U-R, autocorrect will automatically fix the word for you. As you work in Excel, you can add more words into this memory area. When spell check is finished, a confirmation box appears. Click OK. The spell check feature is very handy, but it is not foolproof. The spell check dictionary doesn't always recognize correctly spelled words, such as proper names, scientific terms, or other uncommon words. If you know a word is correctly spelled, click the Ignore button or add it to Excel's main dictionary by clicking the Add button. Also, Excel only spell checks one worksheet at a time, so if you have text in multiple sheets, be sure you run the spell check on each sheet. Now that we have entered some labels, Let's move on to the next section and learn how to save our work.